So capture more leads. Um, so <clears throat> we're gonna cover, uh, if you've been in other classes, there's uh, some other stuff that you've hopefully already covered, but um, you're gonna, uh, you've generated more leads, grow your database, uh, capture leads at open houses, which some of you guys are talking about doing and capture leads with social media. Um, so this is kind of on um, beyond what you've already kind of talked about, maybe some other avenues that you guys could capture more leads um, and different different ways of going about it um, and how important they are to, uh, uh, to our business. Uh, lead generation, as you've probably heard at nauseum, is uh, is the the most important thing for us to do. Um, uh, so, you love people, but at the same time, you haven't learned to love hunting them. What do you guys think about that quote right there? I've got some personal opinions, but you guys like that quote? It would go hunt people. I think it's a little um, intimidating to think about. <laughs> <that quote. laughs> I uh, that that's a good way of putting it. I personally wouldn't use this quote, but um, I mean, uh, hopefully, you can get the idea of what they're trying to say. Is that you need to go after people. You need to go find people that are willing to, um, you know, either already or uh, to uh, list a house or buy a house or know somebody that are. So that's that's what I take out of this. Um, it's not the words that I would specifically use, um, but that's essentially what it means: is is go find people that are in your area. Um, let's see here. All right, systems. As you guys uh, may or may not know, Keller Williams is a, uh, a technology co uh, company. They have a lot of systems uh, in place that you can use that um, don't cost anything additional for you to use as an agent. Uh, it comes as a part of your um, commission splits and your and your monthly cost for offices. Um, you could choose to use other methods, um, but Command has some really good built-in systems that work. Um, and you can learn more about that uh, if you haven't already. Um, who uses command here? You learn? Yeah. Good. All right. Excellent. Cassie, you, yeah? Yes, daily. All right. Barely, is that what you said? Daily. Oh, daily. Okay. Yeah. I was like, that sounds better. Okay. Daily. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, I, um, when I first started, I, uh, I knew command had existed, um, but it is, it's gotten a lot better um, over the last few years, as well as um, if you use the system appropriately, it does automate a lot of stuff for you guys. Um, so I like this quote a little bit better, but uh, your, your number one job is to find ways to get in the path of motivated buyers and sellers. So kind of how I summarize the hunt people, this is kind of saying it a little bit nicer, less intimidating, um, that type of thing. Um, uh, so basically, yeah, without leads, we have no sales, no business. We're just going to sit around twiddling our thumbs, get mad at uh, ourselves and uh, probably quit the business pretty quickly. So we got it. We got to lead generate. Um, the nice thing about it is they're everywhere. Uh, you just have to look for them. Um, uh, you just, you know, Always be ready to engage in a conversation um, about real estate or about the industry, um, you know, whether that's specifically buying and selling or somebody that just needs a, a resource. That's how I approach my business is be a resource for people. So they say, hey, I, you know, my floors are getting really dirty. I'm, I'm thinking about replacing them. That's that's a lead in to say, hey, I got a great floor guy. Let me connect you. And, you know, now that you have great new floors, your house is worth more. Uh, so let's think about selling it so you can take that equity out of it. Uh, that's an easy way to transition into having a conversation. I wouldn't be that that quick about it, but you know, once you connect people, your resource, they think of you for more than just buying and selling. So the two M's of lead generation are message and method. Uh, so you wanna you wanna your message should be relevant to the current market. Um, you know, if your message is is currently um Hey, uh, the rates are historically low. You're basically going to get this house for just pennies on the dollar. Is that a relevant message to today's uh, rate environment? No. No, they're still low -er than they have been in the past, but they're not 
two and a half, three percent, three and a half, four percent anymore, right? So everybody, most people that have been looking for any length of time know that the rates have gone up. And that's probably going to be one of the first questions or objections to Amanda's point that people are going to bring up. Um, so you have to be able to have your message be relevant. Say, hey, rates may have gone up the last couple of years. Um, however, historically, they're average still. Um, or, you know, there's ways for us to get creative on finding you a house, despite the fact that rates have, uh, are fluctuating right now. Um, so it's just important to have a, a relevant message. Um, and then the, the next thing is make an offer or make offer for immediate response. You guys may or may not have heard the term MOFIR, M-O-F-I-R. That's what the acronym stands for is make offer for immediate response. Um, so it, when you post or you talk or um, send emails or however you're connecting with people, ask a question or offer something that they're going to want to respond to you. Um, Cause that's the key is getting a response, sending out a whole bunch of stuff and not getting any responses to it um, may work at some point, but you're, you need people to respond to you and engage with you. So that's the key for your messages. Um, <clears throat> and like it says there, direct offer, or indirect offer. It can be like kind of in your face, call me now, or it can be, Hey, when you're ready, give me a call. Um, both can work. One's a little bit more effective uh, depending on how you do it. Um, you also have to choose your target audience um, and know who you're trying to go for. Um, you're not going to be able to please everybody. All right. So like I said earlier, leads are everywhere. Um, I oftentimes run into people maybe that I know or or just say hi and friendly in the store. Um, and you know, maybe I'm, I have a, a logoed hat for my team logo. Maybe somebody compliments me on that and said, oh, you know, thank you very much. I appreciate that. This is, yeah, I'm a, a real estate agent with uh, a team with my wife and uh, we're both licensed agent. Love helping people with houses. Thank you for the compliment. Um, we, we like it ourselves. Uh, and just start engaging conversation. Um, or I run into somebody at the store and they're like, oh my gosh, you look busy. I'm like, oh, I was just out showing some houses, some clients. I got to run to the store, pick up some, you know, some odds and ends or some groceries or some medicine or whatever. And I always drop that little bit into the conversation, regardless if I'm showing a house or not. Um, that's usually where I come from is either a meeting with a client that's looking to buy or sell an investor, or I just showed houses to people in the area. So I just thought I'd stop by the, the store on the way back to my office so you can you can do that. Um, and that's kind of how I start the conversation or work that in pretty easily. Uh, and then I ask them how they're doing, right? And connect. And then uh, at the end of it, depending on how the conversation goes, this is obviously just a casual run in. I don't always ask for business if that's going to how it's going to be. But um, there are opportunities basically everywhere. You just have to look for it. I can ask you, do you guys have uh, learned anything yet? <laughs> no? Yep. Okay. <laughs> All right. So you guys have heard prospecting versus marketing. Um, so lead generation is a contact sport. Uh, simple rules. It means making contact with people through prospecting, prospecting and marketing. Um, so basically... Do you guys know the difference between prospecting and marketing? One or the other. Does anybody know what either one means? Well, to me, prospecting is more of a one-on-one -on -one kind of conversation as far as like actual contact, human contact, and marketing is more of a, a broader reach without the, like that leads to the, prospecting i'm not sure if i'm right that's just my thing in my head how i look I, at it yeah that's definitely one way to describe it and i think you're you've got some good points in there that you're, you're pretty close um and i, I would say that you, you're accurate in some sense um prospecting prospecting is more of like you're going out and and searching more a specific targeted audience or one-on-one -on -one or a small small group and you're looking for more immediate responses 
Um, and, and so you're gonna you're gonna prospect today for two hours, and your expectation is that you're going to connect directly with how many ever people your goal is, right? Marketing is going to be longer term. Here's my name. Here's my brand. Think of me down the road, um, or when you're ready. That's that's kind of the difference between the two. Prospecting is going to be um, a little a, a lot more uh, labor intensive. Time time intensive. You're going to be directly interacting with with things. Where marketing is going to be more costs, uh, and and not necessarily you doing most of the work. It's just out there wherever you do your marketing with. So you probably may or may not have seen this chart before, um, but everybody you know, including yourself, is somewhere on this graph. Uh, you are either in a house and you're happy and you're just floating along doing like no motivation to move whatsoever, or you're at the top, ready to move now. And if you're just now getting in front of them, you're probably too late because 15 other realtors have already contacted them and they may even already have a sign in their yard, right? So where where is the best time to connect with these people with with their in this timeline? Where do you guys think is the best time to connect with people? When they're happy with where they're at. Ooh, I like that. Why is that, Cassie? Because when they are ready to move, then they've already known of you and hopefully on a little bit of a personal level. So you want to establish that relationship before they need you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I love that approach. That's great. Um, and, I, you know, that's probably going to be my answer. But however, the, the the true answer is that there's not really a bad time to get to know anybody. Um, but like I said before, if you're just getting to know somebody and they're ready to move, you have to build that rapport and that trust immediately. Um, whereas if you start when they're happy and you start establishing that relationship, maybe get into their friend circle or uh, co-worker circle, you know, whatever the case may be, um, you 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 have to put in more work, but when they're ready to move, hopefully you've done your job and they think of you first. Um, but it you know it could work. I would like any to add something. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Well, uh, we as new new agent, new brand agent, um, having trouble. Oh, for example, it happened to me uh, two weeks ago. Uh, some client when he she knew that um new brand as if i i saw in her face that oh you're a new one so as if she's <laughs> saying that you know nothing or you have still no experience mm -hmm. i i could see that in her face so that's what i'm having trouble with how to convince mm -hmm. um others that I can do that. Just trust me, even yeah. though it's um, for me. Yeah. yeah. So that's it's, it's a really good question or or point to bring up because every new agent goes through it a little bit. Um, the it is a challenge, and I think the the toughest thing for um, for me personally when when I was new um, was getting it out of my head that I'm new, um, and I I try. At first, I, I told people that I was new. Um, and when I first started posting on social media, that's great. Hey, I'm a, I'm an agent. Come use me. I, I need help or, you know, all my friends and family and stuff. That's a great way to get those people that are, are already trust you and want to, to use you for that kind of stuff. You will run into people that that are like they see that you're new and, and immediately there's a roadblock that you have to somehow either get over uh, or get through. Um, it's. It's just a reality. Um, what what some of the things you can use is, I sit, still say sometimes, I don't know everything. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I I have experience doing this. However, I also have my office. Uh, in my case, in Eugene Springfield, I have uh, two um, principal brokers here full time in the office that I could either call, text, or email at any point and ask a question for, for any situation that I may or may not have come through. Um, and I also advertise that I'm a team um, and, and for myself, because I truly am, my wife and I are a team, but I also include inspectors, mortgage lender, lenders, everybody that I deal with is a part of my team. 
So I tout that just as much as my personal experience. And when I was new, I touted what my uh, team was was doing. Um, and so that's that's how I try and approach that. Um, and, and that has helped me um, when I was new to kind of get over that hump. There, there truly sometimes is just those people that they think you're new and they're not going to work with you. Um, and, and so unfortunately that is something you, you run into. Um, I would say, how long do you feel like you're new for, um, is something that you have to kind of be okay with, um, and understand, you know, are you new now that you've gotten some open houses underneath your belt? You've had those conversations, you're following up with people. Do you feel like you're, you're still in the new agent side? In some points, in some specific details, yes, I don't have the answers, uh, mm -hmm. and I want to know the answer in my inside myself. But I know that there's a huge team behind me is supporting me. I know I'm not alone. I know if I need anything, they will give me the right answer. But in front. I want I want the, the client be confident that he see in my cell and my face that I know what I'm doing. <clears throat> don't hesitate and don't be afraid. I can't help you. So mm -hmm. that's what I struggle to reach out. That I want that confidence that to convince the other that I can do it. Okay. So um, do you do um, uh, I don't know what they call them uh, anymore, but do you do script practices? Do you not practice always, talking? Yeah. Not always, to be honest. Okay. No, 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 not always. Okay, excellent. Well, so here's here's my suggestion for you, like specifically, and honestly, everybody on this call, um, I still do them. So um, is practice those. It's super awkward. It's uncomfortable, and everybody hates it. Um, but here's here's the here's the reason why, and here's the reason why I do it. Um, I, I say this to all new agents and even some people that are just struggling with having the confidence when they're telling uh, people, you know, things about the, the business is I very rarely tell people when I'm having a conversation with them, like my actual client, I very rarely have to tell somebody how long I've been doing this and how good I am at doing it. Because when I'm talking to them, I tell them, I ask them a whole bunch of questions which gets it focused on them. But I also have the conversation when they have a question, I either know the answer or I know who I'm going to go ask for that answer. So even if I don't, I'm honest. I say, you know, that's that's a situation that I haven't come across yet in my experience. So I'm going to go ahead and connect with my principal broker at the office that's been doing this for X amount of years. And just to make sure I'm not going to mislead you and, and guide you down a path that's going to be wrong for you, let me make sure I have the right answer and I'm going to get back to you. People are going to respect you a lot more for doing that than trying to fumble your way through an answer. Um, and so going back to the scripts, you're going to have the confidence to say what I just did. Sorry. No, you're fine. You're, you're going to have the confidence to say what I just said to your client with confidence, even though you don't know the answer. In, in certain circumstances, you can confidently say, I will find you the answer. And here's when I'm going to get back to you, because I know I have my resources that I'm going to get connected with. And having the confidence to say that in the confident way will go a lot farther with your client than just trying to fake it through a conversation, because then they can see that you don't know the answer or you're not confident in your answer. And they're going to have a hard time trusting you or believing in you. So that's the scripts are going to help you know when it's OK to say, I don't know. And they're also going to help you know what to say in, in a lot of situations. Um, so that that is the best advice I can give to you and everybody on this call is to practice. Um, here's here's also the other reason why it doesn't cost you any money to script practice with anybody on this call or anybody in your office. Right. It's free. Right. Nobody's going to charge you to to pick up the call or you're sitting in the office and have a conversation with them for 15 minutes, 30 minutes, whatever. Right. It's free. If you go to a client call and you screw it up and you're not confident and they say, see you later. I don't want to work with this person. This Corin guy's a joke. How much did that just cost you? Yeah, a lot, a lot. 
thousand. Average average commission is roughly ten thousand dollars. So if you lose out on a deal, that's ten thousand dollars that you just lost out lost out on, right? And I say average commission just over the course of everything. I'm not talking about commission percentage because I have to be obviously very careful about that. What I'm saying is. That's that's a lot of money that you just left on the table because you didn't want to be awkward and uncomfortable in a free setting with friends and other coworkers that are going to have screw ups too. Like I said, it's I can't stress this enough. It's so uncomfortable. It's awkward. Nobody likes to do it. Just do it. All right. <laughs> um, anyway, I'll, I'll just stop beating that to to, to death. But it, you'll find the confidence. And for me, it actually um, uh, got me motivated to do other things throughout the day when I did the script practice for a half an hour, because like I said, I'm focusing on real estate for this half an hour. The whole rest of the day, I was focused on real estate. So it helped me focus and get those phone calls going or those open houses or door knocking, whatever it is. All right. Oops, I got to click back on here. There it is. All right. So here's kind of a summary of what I've already said as far as prospecting versus marketing. Um, so marketing is going to be money intensive. It's passive, long-term results. Whoops. Um, prospecting, uh, like Dee said, uh, you're more proactive, immediate results. You're going to be in front of people. All right. So here's some things uh, you could do um, for prospecting. Um has anybody seen a list like this or is anybody doing anything on this list? Raise your hand and say, I've done one example or or unmute yourself and tell me which one you've done. I have done in my past career in California, a lot of these, if not all of these. Um, one of the things that was like so surprising, and this is just a quick story is, I, myself and several other agents, there was four of us all in, we got a booth at a kid's fest and we passed out um, microwave popcorn with our cards in it. And, you know, it's like we paid several hundred dollars each for the booth and did the thing for three days. It was, you know, not the most enjoyable thing. I got three deals out of giving away popcorn over two days in the 90 degree weather. So worth it. You got you got lucky the popcorn didn't start popping if it was that hot. My God. I know, but it was so <laughs> what was crazy about it is it wasn't immediate. One of the deals came shortly thereafter within a few months, but then one deal was like a year and a half later. This wow. late, I know. And she said, Yeah, my son just found this pack of popcorn that you gave us in his toy box. So I called you and, and then it ended up being, you know, from California. It was like a nineteen thousand dollar commission. It's like, yeah. That's right. right. <laughs> so that more than paid for the couple hundred bucks in the couple days that you s sat in 90 degree weather, right? You bet. Yeah. You bet. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's a great example of just doing it, suffering through maybe, I guess you could say, if you want to say suffer. Um, but if you're doing something, it, it, it could have some, some results like that. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. Um, and that could work up here in Oregon too. Uh, might not be 90 degree weather. It might be just be raining cats and dogs, but <laughs> uh, anybody else do any of these um, and either have success or not success or just feel like kind of a goofball because you did some of these? One other person. I have had very, very, very little success with lawyers. Uh -huh. They don't want okay. to get to be the time of damn day. <laughs> <laughs> So what kind of lawyers are you reaching out to? Divorce, uh, ba basically any uh, standard real estate divorce lawyers that I could very easily see meshing with real estate mm -hmm. fluidly. And every single one of them I've called and it's always the, hi, I'm Amanda. I'd love to take you out for coffee sometime. My treat just to chat and blah, 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 blah. And it's always, oh, well, I already know 42 agents and I already have... 37 clients more than I need move along. Mm -hmm. You don't even mm -hmm. want free coffee. Okay. <laughs> um, uh, do you, uh, how do you get in, in, in front of, or do you, how do you get connected with these, these lawyers? Do you just like Usually phone small. search? You just like search Google or whatever and find their, their phone number. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Do you know anybody in your area that um, maybe is connected with these people? Well, truth be told, I just moved. So okay. I, that's been acting, it's been a huge force acting against me. I have mm -hmm. a handful of transactions under my belt. And then I moved to a new area that is already oversaturated with agents. Mm -hmm. And I'm the new guy and everyone else has lived here and born and raised here and all that crap. So trying to break through has been impossible because I already went to school with Sally and Stacy and they're both agents for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a tough one. And Coos Bay, if I remember correctly, is where you you just moved to. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely a small community that uh, a lot of people know uh, a lot of people. Uh, so breaking in is tough. Um, you know, you, you have to find new people in your community. You, I'm assuming you're going to get a dentist down there and maybe a doctor. You're going to, um, you know, maybe join some clubs or work out. I, I don't know what you guys, what you do for your, your personal time, obviously, but all those people and all those places, you're going to meet people, right? And those are maybe where to start and offer to go take them out to coffee and start that relationship that way. Figure out what they do for a living. And if there's an intriguing connection, then take them out to lunch or coffee um, or just pick up the phone call, you know, or whatever, engage in the conversation. Like we were talking before, engage, figure out what they are doing, where they're working, what they want and how you can help them rather how they can help you. Um, it, it, it's a great way to get the foot in the door. And uh, I believe it was uh, Cassie start, you know, when, when they don't need you build that relationship and get that foot in the door. So when they do need you, you're going to be at the top of their list. Uh, you have, you have to start somewhere. Um, but I guarantee you have to meet people in the community. They could be even the pizza place that you go visit every Friday night, you know, talk to the manager or somebody that looks like they might be, uh, you know, have a wherewithal to potentially at some point buy a house. Um, you know, that's a way to start, right? Oh yeah. Um, lawyers are notorious for exactly what you you. <laughs> um, you know, uh, I I've been connected with a handful of lawyers. Um, I've been able to get them to coffee because I went through a relationship I already had with somebody else. So I, I've never just called up a lawyer and said, hey, you want to meet? Um, because I I don't like when people do that to me, depending on what they're asking for. But if I have somebody that I'm already friends with or work relationship with, and I've been out, I'm at coffee with them, I almost always end my coffees with who else should I know? Who else can I help? Who else can I be connected with? And don't say who else has a referral for me or who else is buying and selling. I, I don't almost, I almost never say that because then it's like, you have to help me directly. What my job is, is to meet as many people as possible in, in my community. So then I can reach out to them and help them. That's how I approach. So that would be my suggestion as far as how to approach trying to get in front of a lawyer. Um, but it is it's it's tough to get to their top one or two. I, I'm just going to let you know it's even if you do get in front of them, it's going to take a while, a lot of work to get in front of them or to to be, you know, work your way up the list unless they're brand new. <laughs> uh, anybody else want to jump in and say anything that they've tried on this list or um, maybe even not on this yeah. list? Mm, I'm planning to do an event this Saturday. Um around 60 people I invited okay. in my community. Yeah. Uh, most of them are new buyer home, new buyer. So <laughs> kind of I'm planning to do some sessions, one session actually, to educate them. What should they do? What's the steps that they should follow before thinking to buy a house? So and they were so excited to hear about it. So, wish me luck. Yeah. So you invited sixty people. Do you are you asking them to RSVP? Uh, I, I don't know. What do I still uh, thinking? Respond and say that they're coming. The, the, are you asking them to do? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. yeah of, okay. course, of course. And how many people have said that they're coming? Fifty-five. Fifty-five out of sixty said they're coming. Oh, mm -hmm. Wow, um, I, I can you teach me how to do that? Because <laughs> well, it's in my hard. community, and most of them they are doing nothing. Actually, 
actually. So this kind of uh, enjoyment for them when they get this invitation. Gotcha. So okay. Food and uh, music, so that kind of fun. And I'm planning to do some games, some uh, presents. So yeah. Fantastic. Are Are you hosting that yourself, or do you have uh, a partner? Me and uh... my friend. My friend. Uh, she's expert in doing uh, events, so she's helping me in that. Okay. Is she just an event planner or is she like in the industry? Just like, yeah, just, yeah. She was, was working in an organization, if you heard about it, ERCO. And uh, she done a lot such events and she gave me a lot of ideas, amazing ideas. So why not? Let's do it. If you can get 55 people to show up and even have one short conversation about real estate, uh, I'm impressed. Like what do I you said, think? I would, I would just say, um, you know, just make sure you're, uh, if you don't have all of their information, find a way to organically collect their information, meaning their full name, um, email address. I contacted and my lender number. to give me some information that mm -hmm. for what kind of mortgage, what kind of. Uh, okay. Uh, and I'm, yeah, yeah, I. I made a contact with him and he helped me a lot and give me some uh, tips that what should I say in the event. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I no, uh, you definitely want to follow find up. Find a sign sheet that they can, they can sign their email, phone number. But uh, although I know their phone number, most of them. Yeah, I but figured you had some email. kind of connecting. But, um, yeah, I mean, just email, phone number, and, and physical address. If you don't have all three of those, those are the, the trifecta that you want. Yeah. Um, My daughter that will one. help me in that, too. So Perfect. I will lose Perfect. That. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> So yeah, those are... I'm sorry. Can I just interject one thing? Sure. Just on your event, if you uh -huh. tell people when they come in that they have to sign a little card and fill out all of the information that you need, and then you put that card in the giveaway bucket, and then in order for them to be qualified for the prizes you're going <laughs> to give, they have to have their card fully filled out, then you can get all that information because people are there they're going to want the prizes that's of one of the things we did with our little um, kid fest booth that we did we gave a disney trip away to a, for a family of four they had to fill out the card completely mm -hmm. and we got that's well i guarantee their uh, address <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, right. yeah. Make sure you get great. that. That's so important. Okay, yeah. good idea. Thank you. Yeah, great suggestion, Dee. Thank you. And thanks for sharing. Um I would love to hear how that turns out um because i'm impressed that you like i said you can get 55 people in a room uh event planners apparently know what they're talking about so but, um, but not all of them uh, they they own their house some of them own their house but why not let's uh, they be in touch with they yeah. might sell i mean you saw that bell they curve earlier those. right they could be yeah. almost ready to sell and buy so that's two transactions right yeah. Um, so excellent. Well, great. Um, uh, I, I love these, uh, ideas and I mean, it sounds like you guys are, are, you know, having some success on that. Um, obviously there's a list here. What I will say on prospecting, um, is, is pick one or two, um, and really focus on those. If you try and pick all whatever, I don't even know how many are on here. Let's say 15. Um, this is a small list. I've seen ones with literally hundreds of ways to prospect, um, you know, you're going to get uh, lost, you're going to get diluted, and you're not going to be able to focus and um, really hone in on how like one that you really enjoy, and one that is uh, effective um, uh, for you. Um, so I would just encourage really focusing on one or two, maybe three. Um, but just just really focusing on that uh, concentration. And if you try it for a little while and give it a really fair shake and it's not working for you, figure out how to either tweak it or just go a different route. Um, let's see here. All right, so marketing is a little bit different. Um, like we were talking about, it's a little bit long-term. It's typically a lot more cost involved. Um, you're maybe not so directly involved on an ongoing basis. Um, has anybody tried any marketing on here as far as like uh, some of these are pretty big ticket items like radio, TV, news. Well, I don't know if anybody does newspapers anymore, but 
um, you know, that type of thing. Uh, do you guys advertise or market on social media or anything like that? I market on social media, of course, um, mm -hmm. not paid, just on my um, Facebook real estate page and Instagram. And then I always share my Facebook stuff to my personal. Um, mm -hmm. And then I am doing like a, I guess, I don't know that it falls under direct mail, but from the title company that I really love, mm -hmm. I am doing foreclosure lists from them and send those out. I've been doing that for probably a month now. So I'm still like, let it, let it ride. Sometimes it takes more than a short period of time to see anything from that. And it's relatively cheap with stamps and you know what I mean? Mm -hmm, for people. sure. And Kat, Cassie, are you, um, have you uh, familiarized yourself with foreclosure process um, and, and that type of thing? Just overviews of it that my understanding is, is that if we were to, get it listed and an offer accepted that that if we take the steps can negate and push out the foreclosure. Yeah, it really depends on what type and how far down the road it is. Um, mm -hmm. I would just encourage you to talk to your principal broker in your office okay. um, and, and really make sure that you understand the process. Um, I, it's a, it's a great lead source if you do it right. Um, it's, it's just a different beast. So, um, sure. just, just, just make sure that you familiarize yourself at least enough that you can sound when you do have a successful, uh, you know, response, uh, that you can roll with that and not learn as much on the fly. So that would be my only suggestion on that. Um, but uh, okay. it's a, it's a pretty untapped, uh, source right now because, uh, foreclosures have been pretty minimal the last few years. Um, so it's, you know, it, it's kind of on the rise, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, however you want to look at it. Um, but it is a different beast. So I would encourage you to talk to your principal broker, just to make sure that you're, um, you know, checking as many boxes as you can. Perfect. I wrote that down. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, and anybody else doing any actual marketing, um, out there? I've done postcard marketing, you know, okay. um, when what I was, type? Well, when I was busy selling, I was doing, you know, just listed, you know, pending or under contract, you know, just sold. I would do, you know, a couple of us sometimes would go in together and send something out if we had like a little bit of, a, little bit of a market share. Um, okay. You know, just kind of things like that. But I did monthly postcard campaigns, but I feel like that's a little passe these days. I'm not sure. Um, is that still effective? <laughs> um, I, I think it, a lot of things are effective depending on what you're trying to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. I, in my opinion, those monthly mailers, uh, what, you know, they're really popular around here are coupons. You send out a coupon once a month for a local whatever, like during the summer, an icy or a, a you know, a snow cone or something like that, or, mm -hmm. you know, a local burger joint, that kind of stuff. Um, it's, it's creates that top of mind awareness, um, I would say that it it does cost money to do that, obviously, and it it is a long term thing, right? It's you may not get that direct thing, so it it does work. However, it's really tough to gauge what it's doing for you. Um, the, you don't see that immediate um, or that that trackable. Um, there is ways because uh, we have in our office we have a person that basically handles all that. If you choose to, they'll mail it out, and then the the used ones that come back they'll give to you, so you can track who's actually using it. And that's an opportunity for you to follow up and say, "Hey, thank you so much. Uh, you know, for using this. Uh, you know, I just want to say thanks um, for for this. I'm glad that you found use of it. You know, that kind of stuff. It's an opportunity to follow up." Um, but that is definitely more of a long-term, like down the road payoff, uh, just being top of mind in addition to everything else you're doing. Um, yeah, I feel like when I was new, like new, and I was like, I was doing a geographical farm area. I think mm -hmm. what it what it gave me, even though it maybe didn't give me huge results, what it did give me was people didn't know I was new. Right. Because mm -hmm. they saw my, they were getting a mailer from me mm -hmm. and they saw my face. And so then when I would prospect in other ways, they were like, oh, I know you, even though they didn't really know where they knew me from or, oh, yeah, you're a real estate agent. They kind of yep. knew that. Right. So. 
Absolutely. Name recognition or brand recognition, you know, that type of thing. You're absolutely right. It's a good way to, um, to push past that I'm new uh, status. Um, I, like I said, I mean, if you can afford it, awesome. I, I know a lot of agents that, that, that they've worked it into their budget um, and they feel like it's, it's definitely beneficial. Almost exactly what you've described is it's just, Oh yeah, I've, I've not, this isn't the first letter I've gotten from you, you know, kind of thing. Um, so it, it does work from that sense. Um, you, you just, if you're a newer agent trying to drum up business immediately um, and that's what your focus is, that is the mailers are not necessarily the way to go um, because it, it, it it will eventually catch uh, build, um, but it's going to be a lot of money out of pocket for those that don't have money initially. Yeah. If if I'm if I'm saying that correctly, so I don't want to discount the fact that they they do work. It's just maybe a different route um, if you if you're able to budget how much ever it is um, and look into how much it costs and whether or not that is something you can budget into your your expenses um, on a monthly basis for at least six months uh, to make sure that you're getting something out of it, but probably more like a 12-month period, um, e even if it, a monthly time frame. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So yeah, prospecting and marketing. So you kind of get both uh, for this. There's definitely a lot of crossovers for sure. Um, you know, some of these are, are events, uh, you know, like we talked about uh that a couple of you guys are, are doing. Um, there's geographic and demographic. Um, do you, can somebody help me uh, know, uh, tell me what the difference between those two are? Geographic is an area, a neighborhood or a farm. Demographic would be a people group. You know. Fantastic, thank you, that's perfect. Um, so yeah, that's, I mean, they're both uh, great ways to market people. Um, uh, we as agents do have to be a little bit careful on how specific we go on certain things and how we go about it. Um, so just make sure you're not breaking any laws when you're trying to focus on a specific uh, group of people or a specific area. Um, there are rules and laws against that. Um, if done right, you don't have to worry about it, um, it but it, it can cross lines. And if somebody wants to throw a stink about it, you can get fined and in trouble. So just be aware of that. Don't be scared of it, but just be aware of the rules so you don't cross those lines. Um, and yeah. A couple of you guys have mentioned door knocking. Um, do you door knock just to door knock or do you door knock in association with like say an open house? I do a lot of door knocking in my neighborhood and I do it seasonally. Okay, but what does that look like? Well, the way I see it is I automatically have an excuse to knock on your door because of location. If you live within a couple blocks of me, you're my neighbor. So sure. as soon as I moved, I knocked and brought uh, little bags to introduce myself to the neighborhood. I did the same thing at Halloween, Christmas, and I'm literally multitasking doing my spring ones right now. Excellent. Okay. So that's what you mean by seasonal is, is you have, yeah. you know, four or five touches. Mm -hmm. Seasonally. And it's, I'm your neighbor. So the way they see me is. It's just that neighbor gal that's coming and giving us more shit. Right, but it's 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 recognition. So hopefully they keep some of that stuff. And I've and gotten phone calls it. from them multiple times. I got I uh, have a referral that's a buyer I'm working with right now from right. it, and it's not even the neighbor. It's the neighbor's granddaughter or something. You know, it's right. just old. I call her metal grandma because she was listening to Nirvana and she's 75 when I knocked on her door. It was fantastic. So I call her Nirvana, or Metal Grandma, and Metal Grandma calls me, and she's like, hey, if you're over at your house, my granddaughter's over here, and she just got herself a pre-approval. Fuck, I am, I'm there right now. Yesterday, last week, I'm yeah. there. Yeah, well, no, if you have a hot lead like that, you definitely want to jump on that, so. Yeah, and uh, it's, yeah, as far as the door knocking goes, like I said, neighborhood's really easy because they're your neighbors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 
Well, and that's, and a, that's a, definitely a reason for sure. And, and yeah, if you are comfortable with that and go knocking on your neighbor's door, it's a reason. I what The whole point I brought that up is because I have to have a reason to go door knock. I just can't go knock on somebody's door and be like, hi, I'm Corin and I sell houses. Like for me, that's just super awkward. Uh, that's part of the scripting, right? You want to you wanna practice that before you go knock on somebody's door and sound like I just sounded, right? Amanda sounds like she's way more confident dropping off uh, a, a flyer or a goodie bag or whatever i and carry a basket, basket. yeah and i look like the easter bunny and it's perfectly fine with me like i walk with a basket full of little bags or right. basically i'm bringing something that's yeah. that's what my thing is you're my neighbor yeah. which is yeah. why i chose you and i'm knocking on your door because hey hope you had a great holiday season happy spring here's a little bit of uh Here's a little bag with some seed packets that I got at the dollar store. Twenty five cents a pack. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Uh, and your time to go door knock. So if you ever need anything, you can give me a call. You know, I'm just down the road. Perfect. Oh my no, gosh! A, thank you so much. Yeah, so that's a it's a great intro. Absolutely, I love it. Uh, it gives you a reason to knock on the door for sure. So and that's yeah, that's, that's one door. that's one example for sure. Sorry, sorry, it's kind of fading in and out. I don't mean to keep interrupting you, Amanda. No, <laughs> Just, that's perfectly that fine. And Cassie, you can definitely steal that because it yeah. works fluidly every time. The only time that somebody doesn't like it is if they're not at the house. Yeah, and I still get calls if they aren't there. I just yeah. leave it on the porch. Right. I right. love that. I personally love the door knocking. I have the most adorable 11, a little 11 year old. And she tells everybody she's a realtor in training and uh, my business partner. She keeps me on point. She doesn't let me be lazy about making bags up and stuff. Um, I literally knock on the door. Hi, how are you? My name's Cassie Stry. Um, and this is my daughter, Evelyn. I'm a realtor. She's a realtor in training and my business partner. And we're just spreading like what we did for Christmas. We're just spreading Christmas joy. And it had some Christmas goodies and um, on my business card and a like what I think is a quality holiday recipe in it. Hmm. So okay. mean, that's I'm low pressure sales. I come from 10 years in insurance. Um, and one is one of the top sales agents. And but I was the least like in your face sales agent out there mm -hmm. yeah so, definitely that's my style i'm not one to be like get to help somebody buy and sell that's not my mo i'm just <laughs> like get to know my face get to know what i do and look i have the most adorable little daughter <laughs> <laughs> that, that definitely helps if you have a, a cute kid uh, in tow uh, a lot of people open the door a lot wider if uh, if you're if you're not just by yourself for sure so um those are great uh i, I love those uh, those are great examples of ways to uh not just door knock because of open houses or or just to go around and say hey i sell stuff so I love those ideas. Those are great. Um, and, and especially newer agents uh, definitely need those kind of uh, ideas. So I think we just talked about some of the ahas. I think a couple people just got them uh, just from this conversation. So anybody else have anything else from the most recent stuff we were talking about? Well, my biggest aha from that section is I figured foreclosures would be difficult, but it sounds like I need to have a lot more information about it than I did. So I've got it wrote down. I'm going to talk to my PB about it. Perfect. Excellent. Great. I'm glad you got something out of that. That's perfect. All right. So go mind of referrals. Uh, referrals is, is my favorite word, especially if it's not from another agent, because I don't have to pay them a referral fee, but that's beside the point. Um, but uh, so referrals are great. Um, they're, they're amazing for both from another agent in an area that's not where you cover, or even if it is, if you just, maybe you have the listing and you don't want to do both sides. It's possible to do that. Um, I believe it was Dee who said that she has a couple of referrals that are supposed to be closing here pretty soon. Um, it, are those out of California where you used to be, or maybe you could tell us a little bit about those? Yeah, I, um, I've worked in California for years. And so these are um, one of them is my daughter and another one is a friend of mine's son. They're both first time buyers. So I connected them up with an agent that I used to work with at Keller down in the Bay area. And, um, yeah, going to get nice 
big checks. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah. It's it's great. We had um we had a referral this last year and I'm actually um in the process uh, I just referred somebody else um the first last year it was from Colorado and this year it's from Texas. Um so uh you know and you guys are California obviously that's where you're from. Um you know I'm talking agent to agent referral but it sounds like you're you're talking um you know friends family as well as an agent referral. Um, they're, they're great. Uh, you literally just have to say, here's a name, phone number, and kind of their motivation, uh, go. And, and they sign a form. And then a couple months later, you get a check that says we closed. Um, you know, yeah. there may be a little bit more work than that, but, uh, that's, that's sometimes about all it takes. Well, what I'm going to do, I've been writing a letter and I'm going to send it out to my California sphere of influence people and just say, listen, I'm in Oregon, but I'm still working in the California market. And if you are looking to buy, you know, buy or sell, contact me. And then all I can, then I'll make the introduction. I'm, you know, they used to use me. So now I'm telling them, I will take care of you by connecting you with an agent that I know, like, and trust. Mm -hmm. so Absolutely. Talk to me first. Yep. And then once I make that introduction with the agent, then it's a referral fee for me. So absolutely. I love that approach. Absolutely. Um, and that's and that's what I try and talk to my sphere around here when I'm talking to them. So they don't just think he he only handles Lane County. Um, you know, I, I really have been um uh, more diligent, especially this last year or so, about how I uh, uh need to uh uh that I can help them anywhere. Uh, I say worldwide, but I really focus on the United States because um, I actually had a, a family member trying to buy a house over in Spain. Um, rules are totally different. Um, so while we are worldwide, um, it, it's it's a different ball game if you go outside of the United States. So just be aware of that. Um, but referrals are great. I mean, just like Dee said, I mean, it's 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 a great way for you to try and get a if you're moving from a different area. Amanda, using you as an example, go back to Florence and say, hey, I'm still here. I'm still here. Even if you're not uh, handling that, you could find an agent in, in Florence, although you're probably the only one over there that actually handles Florence. But, you know, that's just besides the point. <laughs> it's tough to find anybody on the, the, the coast, especially southern coast. So um, everybody on this call. Uh, you get to know Amanda. Uh, she'll she'll cover the southern coast. <laughs> I'm speaking from experience. I've I've tried to find um, some some people uh, in, and there's not many out there. So um, shameless plug <laughs> for at least getting to know Amanda to see if she's a good referral uh, partner for you. So anyway, Amanda, did you have something to say? I muted you because it was kind of feedbacking on me, but uh, I'll let you talk now if you want. No worries, no worries. Well, and I'm in the office that's right on a main highway, so I wouldn't be surprised if there's like a traffic hum every time I camp my audio is on. Now, I was, I would love to have a little bit of a, I guess, a discussion regarding um, dual agency, kind of piggybacking on this referral mm -hmm. topic, because for some people, they will try to strictly do dual agency as much as possible. And then there are some agents that would rather refer and just get a sliver of that side rather than the the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can touch on that for a little bit. Um, as you, you are probably aware, it is legal. You can do dual agency in Oregon. Um, you obviously have to fill out the, the appropriate paperwork um, and notify both sides that you are in fact representing both sides. Um, however, um, there are, to your point, um, a lot of agents that either love to do it because you get double commission or hate to do it um, for a variety of reasons. Um, I personally choose not to um, just because uh, it's there's very, very few instances I can think of that I would would choose to do it um, because it's not worth my reputation in my small community to potentially upset one and or both of the parties. Um, because my, my job, literally my, to do my, my fiduciary responsibility, I'm sure we've all heard that because we just took the test, right. Um, is for my client. And if I'm representing both sides, how do I fairly and independently represent both sides and get them the best deal that they possibly can get when I'm representing both sides? It's, it's possible, but it's very, very, very challenging. Um, even if you have the best of intent, one side is going to feel 
at some point that you're favoring the other side. And, it, and there may be a, top, a time where both of them feel like you're favoring the other side. So for me, it is not worth it to do both sides. Now, I will say this, if you're going to refer somebody, your client, you have to choose which side you want to represent. I would say probably lean towards represent the listing uh, side of it, just because listings uh, turn into more leads, you get more buyers. However, it depends on your relationship, um, you know, with whatever client uh, that you are dealing with. Um, also, make sure that you are 100% both those parties are going to be involved in the transaction before you start referring that off. Um, you know, because you get people sometimes that are saying, oh, yeah, I love this house. I want to buy it. Absolutely. Uh, and then like you don't hear from them for a while. Right. And then they, you know, maybe buy a house, but it's not that one. Now you just referred, you know, you're only going to get a portion of your commission um, because you thought it was going to close on that deal. So just be very, very cautious about how soon you you refer that off or be very specific. If you're going to buy this specific house, this agent can help you. But if you decide that this is not the right house, I will help you with 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 the, uh, the buying side or the selling side. Um, so that's my take on it. Um, I know people that do represent both sides and have made it through just fine. Um, like I said, you do get, you know, both sides theoretically. Um, but in my opinion, it's not worth uh, the potential bad press, so to speak, in my community and within my sphere. I find it to be a really easy selling point for my agency relationship. Just on that exact note of it's just not something that I personally want to do because then I don't feel like I can advocate for one more than the other because now I can't, you know, I feel more like a messenger at that point. Absolutely. Yeah. Great point. Uh, Cassie, did you have something that you unmuted for a second or was that an accident? Uh, that must have been an accident. <laughs> all right, cool. All right. I just want to see if you're still there. It's all good. <laughs> Um, let's see here. All right. So, um, as it says on here, um, this is specifically client referrals. Um, but, uh, we've already talked kind of agent to agent, but client referrals is a great opportunity for you to use your existing clients or past clients to get future business. Um, a lot of people, especially newer agents are afraid to ask for that business or that referral from people. Um, there's great opportunities throughout the transaction to ask for referrals. Um, I drop hints throughout the, the process. I kind of start out that way uh, as I finalize my buyer consultation or listing presentation, if it goes well and they sign the, <laughs> the listing agreement, but same for buyers. If we're going to be working together, um, I almost always end that specific one with Hey, uh, you know, I really enjoyed talking with you. I'm so looking forward to finding you your next home. Um, but, you know, let's let we're, you know, I'm going to set up a search for you. Primarily, I work on repeat and referral business. So I would love it if, uh, if do you know anybody that is also potentially looking at buying or selling um, in, in the near future or even down the road? I love to just meet new people and just stop and make them say something. Because if you answer it and just be, oh, yeah, I'd love to to hear if you ever hear anybody, they're like, oh, of course, yeah. And then they walk away and they focus on their transaction, which they should, but they forget about you, right? So it's an opportunity to, to broach that. And then if they don't have anybody right then, the next time I, I have uh, either a milestone throughout the transaction, um, you know, we get done with the inspection and I'm able to negotiate them like, $30,000 off the asking price. And they're like, oh my God, you did an amazing job negotiating. You're like, I took care of you. You're awesome. Hey, do you know of any, like you kind of work it in like, hey, uh, you know, would, do you know of anybody else that would love to save $30,000 on a home purchase? I'd love to chat with them and see if I can help them too. Um, you know, work it in that way or whatever organically works for you. Um, there's natural ways to work it in. Um, I always end the, tra uh, the transaction with them uh, asking, uh, you know, hey, I mentioned a few different times have you run across anybody that's even like was interested in the fact that you're buying a house? Who is that? Can I get connected with them? I'd love to reach out to them. Um, I find the best way to do is a, a three-way connection, either via text or email. Um, that way um, we can both follow up with each other with any questions um, and I can make sure that they're taken care of. Um, most of the time they're pretty uh, comfortable with a three-way connection. Sometimes they're not. Um, that's okay. 
Um, but it's better than saying, hey, can I get their information so I can can I can call them? Because all I hear is I'm you're going to hound them until they respond to you um, most of the time. So a three way connection is, is I found a lot easier to ask for a referral. Um, so. If you're just kind of talking with somebody, obviously, number one is, is provide the value first, give them something, and then you can ask for something in return. Uh, sometimes they even offer something in return. Um, and then reward for referrals. Um, the handwritten thank you note. Um, I usually send some type of a gift card uh, to, to somebody if it's a referral that um, I, I connect with somebody, either they called me directly or I reach out to them and I have an actual conversation. Um, not when that referral closes. I don't wait until the end of it. I'm rewarding the the action of referring somebody to me, not I close the deal because of you. So you have to figure out what that looks like for you as far as how much money or what the gift card looks like or whatever your reward for that referral looks like. Um, but reward the action, not the result. Um, because you want them to send everybody and anybody that has any interest in that um, so you could potentially nurture those and turn those into clients down the road. Any questions on that? Comments? I think that the, I agree 100% with the thinking the action, because obviously not everybody is going to go, okay, so-and-so referred this person to me, but I'm already working with somebody else or whatever. It's the action and and them putting your name out there, they're only going to keep doing it, especially if they get that handwritten thank you or whatever it is. And that that just goes for sales in general. Absolutely. It's been for me for 10 years. <laughs> thank you for reinforcing that. Um, it's also an opportunity for um, you to collect additional information on the person that referred you something. Um, maybe you only have their email or maybe you only have their um their phone number, or maybe you only have the phone number and email, but you don't have their actual uh, physical address or mailing address. Um, hey, I would love to follow up and say thank you very much for this referral. It means the world to me. Uh, I usually uh, send out a thank you card as well as a gift card. So can I please have your physical uh, your physical and mailing address so I can get that over to you as soon as I can to say thank you um, for, for that uh, referral? Because it really does mean so much to me. Um, very rarely are they going to be like, no, I don't want a gift card. I'm not giving you my address. Right. So it's just an organic way to get any missing information that you may have on on that person, because obviously they're thinking of you. So they're willing to trust you with friend, coworker, family, whoever. Um, most likely they're going to give you whatever additional information you need to give to just have in, and follow up with them down the road. Um, so agent to agent referrals, we kind of touched on that a little bit. Um, it's just like your sphere of influence or your network with, with people, um, you know, your, your potential clients, uh, agent to agent referrals is, is some people that's literally their business. They only get referrals from other agents and they only refer to other agents. Um, they, that's literally all, we have a couple of them in this office that I know, I mean, they do a, a little bit of other things, but that's a good chunk of their business. Um, and if you can grow that network with other agents um, and be that one or two, uh, you know, in your area um, and nurture that that relationship, it's a, it's a great way to grow your business, um, get known within your your um, agent population or your uh, Keller Williams, uh, you know, other market centers, uh, that type of thing, as as the go to referral agent in your area. Um, there's a whole host of way of doing ways of doing that. Um, command has a way of connecting with people. Um, that one's a little bit, um, uh, how would I put this, uh, not really efficient. Um, I mean, it's a, it's a good way to get maybe initially connected with somebody, but I would encourage you if you're going to reach out through that, um, to, uh, schedule a one-on-one -on -one phone call with them so you can get to know them or if they're close enough, you can go meet, but most of the time you're for referring to somebody if they're out of your area, um, and have a zoom call or a one-on-one -on -one phone call with them so you can get to know them and make sure they're legit and like can you know actually close a transaction because you don't want to refer to them and have them drop the ball because then it looks bad on you um so that's one way to do it the other way is to actually call the market center in the area that you need an agent or you want to find an agent 
um, uh, maybe like in um, Dee's case, you know, she probably already knows some agents down there, but let's say there's, you know, the person she always referred to retires, you can call up that market center and Hey, who's, who's the new, like, like this person that just retired or who's the, the awesome stud uh, in this, in this office that I can talk to and get to know and a hundred percent can, can say with confidence, I'm going to refer this person and they are going to be stellar. Um, so call the office center um, at market center and get that information directly rather than just Googling somebody yourself. Um, Cause that's what I tell my clients is like, talk to me first. I know a lot of agents. I know good agents. I know bad agents. And I don't, the last thing I want you to do is to Google uh, an agent in an area and hope you get a good one for what most likely is the largest purchase of your entire life please talk to me and I can get you a reputable agent that's going to get you taken care of and to the closing finish line and get to the keys to your house and what you want. Um, please don't just Google somebody's name. And so I have to be stand behind what I just told my client and not just Google somebody else's name and go, hey, yeah, here's somebody that's in your area. Go for it. Um, I have to take that step and build that relationship so I can be confident who I'm referring to. Oops, let's hear. Five, there you go. Um, so yeah, again, command uh, is a way to do that, uh, to kind of quick search. Um, and, uh, but like we talked about going with, uh, talking to the actual um, market center is a good way to do it. Again, we're worldwide. I would encourage you to um, find out if, you want to go worldwide um, and what that kind of looks like. Um, for me, I mentioned Spain earlier. Um, they don't do buyer's agents over there. Um, and so if you have somebody that's looking to buy over there, um, it's a different process. Um, most likely you're going to struggle finding anybody that wants to even talk to you because they hear somebody's buying and they, they think I'm not going to get paid for this. Why would I even respond to you? Um, so that's an example of maybe how it changes from state to state and also worldwide. Um, and that may be why you struggle finding somebody in a certain area if you're going outside the, the United States. But with that being said, don't be close-minded if somebody's saying, hey, I'm moving to wherever, Germany, who knows, right? At least dig into it, figure it out. I mean, it could be something for you. Um, another option is a business to business referral. I mentioned earlier that I say my team is actually everybody that I deal with um, or work with that helps me get my client to the finish line, whether that's selling their house successfully, listing it, selling it, all that fun stuff uh, and or buying a house. Um, inspectors, lenders, photographers, yard people, um, cleaning people, you know, all these people are part of my team. Uh, I, they're not on my payroll, but they're a part of my team that I have to trust in order to get my client to the finish line. So asking them for referrals um, is, is another great way for you to ask for uh, additional business. Um, you know, some of the other examples I mentioned uh, maybe to Amanda that she's in a new place. Um, so if you're new and maybe don't feel like you have that big of a sphere, um, hairdressers, um, barbers, uh, dentists, doctors, veterinarian, um, if you have animals, um, you know, reach out to them, uh, or send goodie bags once a month, maybe buy donuts for the office and say, Hey, I'm, I'm in your area. You know, you take care of my pet. I love you guys. I'm also a realtor would love, uh, you know, if you have an opportunity to reciprocate referrals, cause I've sent a lot of animals to you guys would love the opportunity to work with somebody, you know, or any of your clients, um, auto repair shops, um, handyman. So, uh, that does your kind of punch list for, for houses, plumbers, electricians, gar uh, gardeners, landscapers, all these people are do, uh, people that you're going to interact with throughout the, at some point when you're buying and selling houses with people, um, ask for, for referrals from them. Um, if you don't, I mean, I wouldn't expect a one-to-one, -one, um, meaning you give them a referral and you don't use them again until they give you a referral. Um, don't, 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 uh, I, I don't do that with, I mean, I'm, I'm very open. Like if I trust the person, I'm going to give them the referral. I'm still going to ask them. And uh, oftentimes they say no, because depending on where they're at in the, the space, I mean, a lot of gardeners I've talked to, they're like, I don't even see the homeowners. Like they, they mail me a check or it's an automatic payment. I'm there, they're at work. Like I never have face-to-face -face interaction with that. So my expectation is that they're going to have very little referrals back for me, but I still ask. 
because you never know if they just talk to a homeowner like I really need you to like get get going these next couple months to get this going for spring because you know in come May and June I'm really looking at listing this house you want that that gardener or landscaper to go I know an agent I'm going to call Corin he he's always given me referrals and this is an opportunity I can pay him back um you want to be that on their list even if it's once a year or every three years, right? Be that on somebody's list. And the beauty of business of business referrals is you don't pay a referral fee. So you can send them a gift card and say, thank you, or, or send them more referrals, but uh, it's different than agent to agent where typically you're gonna be paying in a referral fee. Any questions or ahas on any of those referral sources and how you need to go about those? Yeah, but I really do like the gardener thing because you always need a good gardening service in your back pocket on your team. And, you know, I think that that is, um, I do think that there's opportunity there for all of those kinds of um, referrals back and forth, you know, even like from the ground level all the way up, I think that it's so important to establish and then give the business to those same people over and over and over again to like establish the relationship. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And they, and most of the time they're so grateful for it too. Uh, obviously that's how they grow and sustain their business. So, um, you know, practice what you preach is my opinion, right? I mean, I, I re rely on referrals to, to run my business. I know all uh, locally owned or, or small businesses uh, do pretty much the same thing. Um, so yeah, um, also another thing that you can do is if you have a really good or after you've established a relationship with them is ask if um, if they offer a like one time first time discount um, for their services uh, and then work it into, hey, if I refer somebody to you, can you please um, I'm going to tell them that it's uh, my discount uh, for for me, uh, you know, say for them saying that they know me. But can you just give them that five percent discount or 50 bucks off to tune up or, you know, whatever it is? Um, I'm going to tell them that, like, I'm connecting you guys, but I'm going to send everybody to you. So just kind of go along with the fact that you're offering five percent and I'm going to tell them I'm going to take care of the first five percent of your bill if you go over there and, and, and tell these guys Um the client doesn't need to know that that's the relationship that you have with this this business to business relationship. So it's a it's a way for you to kind of win win win. They're going to already offer the discount. You get the benefit of also referring to them, but also kind of the little goodwill that you're you know either you can refer to it that you're taking care of the first five percent or make sure you tell them that I said hello. They'll get you taken care of, and then see if the other person. The other business will say, oh, yeah, no, I take care of Corin's clients all the time. I, you know, I'll, I'll give you a 5% off your bill because because, you know, Corin, you know, he's a good guy. Um, that's the type of relationship you want to build with all these people, because how good does that look when they call out this this other person? They're, they're touting you and how awesome you are. Right. Um, you know, hopefully it's true. And that's not like them just blowing smoke up the client's uh, backside. But, you know, it's it, that's the kind of relationship you need to build with your your professionals that you deal with. Um, let's hear more sources. We already talked about a lot of them. Geographic farming, we kind of touched on earlier. That's an area. Um, so, uh, you know, to Amanda's point, um, she really touches everybody in her neighborhood, like whatever that looks like, if that's, you know, a half a mile in every direction, or if that's like just the end of the street and on both sides, you have to choose what that looks like. You will be shocked at how many doors there are on each street. Um, uh, when you go to start door knocking, um, and it's the summertime and you start sweating profusely and try and look professional as you're door knocking, you will realize how far you have to walk and how many doors you get to knock on. Um, so choose wisely, <laughs> uh, and choose a good time of, uh, of a day. If it's a hot day or a cold day, um, I will just preface it with that. Um, but geographic farming is, is definitely focusing on an area for an extended period of time, whether that's you do all your open houses within that, that area. Um, social media is a little bit touchy because it's really hard to geographically farm a really tight area. You can do it, but for realtors, it, um, it usually doesn't allow you to because that's part of the, you have to be careful what you're marketing to. Um, have your conversations, door knock, 
um, even not on open houses, do the seasonal thing. It's another touch. Um, get their contact information, you know, drop off a little notes and say, hey, I was thinking about, oh, I saw you, you know, you did something different with your yard. That's awesome. I was walking by with my dog the other day and I just, you know, happened to see that you guys put in a new rose bush. That's really cool. I can't wait to see it bloom. You know, all those different touches in your area that you're geographically farming. Um, and those are, you just have to focus on them. Be the agent in that area. Be be the name that everybody sees on all the signs in everybody's yard. Um, it's it's honestly in our area, in Eugene Springfield, is not utilized very much. Um, you, you see people's signs, a whole bunch of different people's signs in one area, um, a lot around here. It's It's very rare that you just see maybe two different agents in like, a geographical area. Um, so either people don't do it very well or they just don't do it very much. Um, or it could be the community. They just all, everybody knows everybody and has their our, our agent. I have a question. Is it, um, are title companies still allowed to give out information on market share for geographic farming? I mean, like to help us establish a geographic farm? Yeah, they, they should be able to give you information. Um, I believe through your MLS, there may be a way to do it, but it's easier just to call the title company. They'll, just, right. they'll do it for free, um, most likely. As long as you're not actually asking for contact information, they'll give you, yeah, percentages. Uh, this agent does, you know, 10% of this this area um, or whatever. So you can make a decision on, yeah, what, what area you want to focus on. And it may not be your immediate neighborhood. Maybe you want to, like, be able to walk around your neighborhood and not talk shop. Uh, I know agents that that say, no, I absolutely do not touch anybody in my neighborhood uh, unless they specifically reach out to me and say, hey, I know you're a realtor. Can you sell my house? Um, they they want to be able to live at their house and not be a realtor. Right. Um, it, I mean, you know, and other people are like Amanda are like, my neighborhood is my sphere. I'm going to know everybody and everybody's going to know me because that's where I want my sign. It's going to piss yeah. me off if I, somebody else's signs in somebody's yard. Right. Um, so I can relate to that. I've seen other people's signs and every time it's like, that, that's a nice pick. <clears throat> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> uh, it is frustrating sometimes, but you have to be able to live with it. So great question though. Uh, yeah. Reach out to your favorite title company, uh, and, and they'll be able to help you out. Um, yeah, kind of like what I was just talking about. Um, make sure you maximize prospecting because if you just do one every once in a while you're not you're not geographically farming you're just throwing a dart at a dartboard and hope it gets even close to a bullseye uh events and seminars um we we already kind of talked about that uh again i'd love to get a follow-up uh on how that is successful um down the road for um uh how that goes after um that happens. Um, so, um, new buyer seminars are, are definitely uh, one pretty easy way to get that. I know some people partner with lenders, uh, especially if you're not familiar with the loan process and how the mortgage underwriting works and kind of some of the, uh, you know, rates and because we're not supposed to quote those. Um, so that's a good partner to do that. I know a lot of people do that. Um, plus they can split costs with you. Um, so it's cheaper. So you're saying on, um, like, uh, the new buyers event or seminar or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you, you kind of answered it, I guess, towards the end, I was thinking, go to them or you're specifically say like, find a lender, put it on. It's kind of what you're yes. saying. Yes. Yeah, so they, I mean, it depends on, I mean, you hopefully have a relationship with a lender or, or establish a relationship with a lender where you can call them up and say, hey, I'm going to do this once or I'm going to do this monthly or I'm going to do this quarterly, but I'm going to do this and I would love for you to be the lending expert and either physically be there or provide me handouts that I can hand out to people with, you know, both of our logos and contact information. Um, and, or they just split the cost for stuff. They don't, maybe they're shy and they don't want to actually be the face in front of the class teaching people, but they would love to help cover the costs and get their marketing material on there. So there's a, there's, there's all different ways of doing it, but typically it's you and a lender standing up in front of a room and saying, Hey, new buyers, we have a great program over here. If you're interested, contact either one of us. And then if they contact either one because of that buyer's program, then you know to, to connect them with the appropriate lender that that you know did the work, um, obviously. So 
some people have multiple lenders that they work with. So that's the only reason I bring that up is maybe you can confuse on who hosted something. Um, does that answer your question, Cass? Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. So again, leads are everywhere. Don't forget it. Don't be afraid to strike up conversations. <laughs> my my daughter rolls her eyes all the time at me because we'll be sitting at a restaurant and somebody next to me starts talking about buying and selling and she can see that my ears start focusing over here. And she's like, dad, I'm talking to you. I'm like, oh, sorry. Yep. Okay. Give me a second. <laughs> Um, so, you know, obviously be careful, be, be attentive to who you need to be attentive to, uh, if you're out on a date or, you know, hanging out with your kids or whatever, but when the opportunity presents itself, um, maybe you could go, uh, you know, introduce yourself to the, uh, the table and say, Hey, I couldn't help but overhear you love to chat, you know, and if it's appropriate, engage a little bit in the conversation, trying to start building that rapport and say, Hey, I've got some availability, on Monday afternoon, you, you want to meet at my office so we can talk a little bit more shop. I'll let you enjoy your beverage or, or dinner with whoever, but, you know, love to get together. Let's set a date. Does this work for you? Cool. Let's go. Obviously, it has to be appropriate, but anyway, that's an example. of Leads are everywhere. You don't have to door knock. You don't have to do what you're uncomfortable with. I will say that. Find something that you're comfortable with and you enjoy because there's a ton of way to lead generate. So capturing the leads, right? It's kind of the whole point of this, or at least the title of this class, um, is make sure that you're using whatever database you're using. I think most people said command. Um, make sure when you talk to somebody at an open house, door knock, whatever, you collect that information. Don't just put it on a post-it note and throw it away. That's, that's a whole boatload of wasted time and energy. Um, make sure you put it somewhere. And then don't just put it into command or your database. Make sure that you do what uh, is called a smart plan. Um, it is literally automated stuff that just announces that you need to do stuff down the, in the future so you don't forget to do the stuff. And that's most likely the follow-up, either on a monthly, quarterly, weekly. Um, there's, there's a whole bunch of already built ones. If you don't know how to find those, uh, just literally go into... Um, smart plans on command and search ones that have a whole bunch of ratings that are good. Um, so this is kind of summarizing everything. I guess we've, we've talked about really lead generation plans, but the, the important piece is anytime you collect information, put it into your, your command. When I first started, I was okay at it, but honestly, I could have been a lot better and I could have grown my database a lot faster. Um, and then the smart plans, that is where I dropped off. Even when I got good at putting stuff in command, I didn't do anything with it. It just sat there. And I had 300 people sitting there waiting for me to contact them. And every once in a while, I'll be like, oh yeah, I haven't talked to so-and-so in a while. And so I called them up, but I never documented that I talked to them. So I had no idea of when or where or what I what I talked about. All of that's built into, into command. Um, all right. So over the course of this, hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, and you are figuring out something that maybe you can implement. I just summarized some stuff, but who's got something they want to say that there's a takeaway maybe and something that they're going to hopefully implement uh, and do uh, when we get off the phone or very close to that? I am going to absolutely steal Amanda's idea. I am going to go to the dollar store. I'm going to buy some seeds. Um, and I'm going to door knock, I live rurally, but I'm going to door knock the nine miles of my road. It's rural, but. Get a, get a bicycle. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm <laughs> fluffy. No way. Maybe ride my horse. Um, <laughs> um, but I am absolutely going to door knock. It's very rural. I think the, the seed packets, whether it's flowers or garden, like, you know, beans or whatever. I do a mix. Huh? I do a mix because yeah. you don't know if somebody's more into flowers or more into food. So I usually do like five or eight packets and I'll do like two or three flowers and then a handful of produce. 
all different and throw your business card in the middle. That way you can say, my number's in there if you need anything. Just, it, it is very organic way to talk to people. Yes, I'm absolutely going to do it. Um, might be fun on horseback. <laughs> Don't Get a little not. satchel, right? Yeah. <laughs> I would definitely remember if my neighbor came riding. I was going to say, showing up on a horseback, you're going to be remembered. <laughs> it might be a, a good way to do that for sure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, great. Yeah. No door knocking and, and a great uh, drop off Popeyes. I think is, is kind of what they're they're called in the biz. Um, you know, something to leave so they remember you. It's not just your face. Um, something. Uh, I think uh, one of you guys said it was. You know. A year or two later, I think it was D, the, like a couple of years later, the popcorn or somebody said there was popcorn that they found in the toy box and you're like, hey, I need I need you. So just because it disappears for a while doesn't mean it's gone. Uh, great. Anybody else? I'm going to work on trying to find a client that already has a lawyer. <laughs> Good. That's my big one. Excellent. I love it. And if they don't, then ask them if they know somebody that might, and then you get connected with somebody else. Eventually, you'll get connected with a lawyer that actually wants to talk to you. Someone's got to know a lawyer. Is willing to talk to you. <laughs> right. You're turning um, into lights. Oh, God damn it. Yeah. Before we get too much farther uh, down the, these ahas and stuff, um, I did drop my contact information uh, in the, the chat. Um, feel free to connect with me uh, offline or ask any questions down the road. Um, I primarily focus on Lane County, um, but uh, you know I'm from I grew up in um, Monmouth Independence and McMinnville and Salem area. Um, so if you ever need anybody, uh, give me a call or if you just want to chat and bounce ideas off of too. So um, uh, anybody else? I, I hear there's definitely some different feels, uh, some different thinking, and maybe even different actions. So I'm 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 glad that we're we're getting there. Um, anybody else have anything they want to add? I think I'm going to dust off my Brian Buffini notebooks from the past uh, and go connect with a geographic farm. I think that's, I, I just sold a house represented buyers a few months ago. So I think I better start working that. Excellent. Um, and yeah, talk with your principal broker in, in your office and kind of just see um, if they have more specific to your geographical area, if if they've heard successful uh, um, geographic farming um, and, and see what's worked or what's not in your specific area. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thanks. Great class. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, let's see here. I think, yeah, I mean, you guys all know it. I'm sure that you've heard it a billion times, at least 10 conversations, 10 contacts added, 10 handwritten notes, uh, 10-5-1. Uh, I'm not 100% sure that my wife does all the social media, so um, I don't know. I think it's 10 likes, five uh, comments, and one share or something like that, or maybe five, I don't know, it's something like that. Anyway, interact with people. Don't just like them. Um, if you just like them, people forget that you're just in the mix of 100 other people that just liked it, so make sure you comment as well. Um, and interact and be selective on who you interact with. Well, I I'd like to add something uh, back to command. I have a problem with it that I know they the command remind us uh, of each calls, each text message we should do. And each time I ignore this reminder. So they have to hire someone to yield at, at the agent that you have to do that. In a state of reminding him because it's not enough. I'm joking, it's just a joke. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Even yeah. though the reminder, I ignore it. So yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> so you're saying that the reminder flag pops up for you to do something and you basically yeah. just go, uh I'll Yeah, to I'll do it later on and nothing. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I that, I raise both hands. Raise both hands on that one. I am I am the <laughs> I'm the king of procrastination and pushing it off to later. I have made a point, especially this year, to not just let them sit there on uh, past dues. I will go in and I will adjust it to um, a, like the next day or or two days later, whenever I feel like I'm going to have an appropriate amount of time to to follow up. So I'm touching it. I may not do the action, but I am touching it so it's not just sitting there as a hundred past due items. Because at some point it gets so daunting 
that you will get in the habit of, of ignoring it, right? And at that point, it becomes almost useless because if you ignore all the, the reminders, you're not doing what those reminders are. Yeah. So I'm, like I said, I'm, I'm raising both hands. I'm, I'm just as guilty as everybody <laughs> here. Um, it just has helped me if I push it down the road, then it pops up again in my, this is your actual to-do list. And I can get rid of all those past dues that I know I've forgotten about. And they're stressing me out. I'm anxiety. I'm like, oh my God, I should have done all this stuff. And I'm never going to get to that. So why even bother? That's my mentality. If you push them off past due into a future, um, uh, a new to-do list, it'll change your mentality. It'll let less stress of you. And if you forget one month to, to reach out to somebody or, or one two month period, however frequently, and you reach out again into one or two or three months, it's better than not doing it ever. So I agree. you're not, you're not alone. Let's just put it that yeah. way. <laughs> That's good. That's relief. <laughs> so I will, I'm sure you've seen this everywhere. Um, so as you know, there is a do not call list. Don't call them. Um, if they've given you the information, um, then you're off the hook. If they, I mean, not 100%, but basically, unless they opt out of stuff and they've said, here's my phone number and email address, that doesn't matter if they're on the do not call list because they've given you the information. It's not you going out, buying their information or finding it somewhere and cold calling them. Okay. So asking for their information is a great way of, of, of circumventing that. Uh, you can confirm with your principal broker in your office to make sure that I didn't just feed you a load of bull. Um, but that is how I understand it is if the client or uh, the client specifically gives you the information, then that the, the do not call list is, is uh, null and void for that specific client uh, until they tell you not to contact them. And then they, they're right back on that. Do not call list. <laughs> Hopefully you don't get to that point if somebody if they gave you the information that means you're doing something uh, maybe too aggressively. Um, I engage every conversation in the spirit of contribution and people are happy to be in a relationship with me. Um, I I agree with that. Um, you know we're mentioned coffees, um, appointments, lunches, getting to know people. Um, you will be remembered if you end the conversation or towards the, when you're wrapping things up. You ask first, because sometimes people ask you this, but I always ask, what is a good referral look like for you? And how can I help you succeed in your business and grow to your goals this year? You will be amazed at how many people lighten up and bright up and go, I've never been asked that before. Thank you so much, especially from a realtor. Um, thank you so much for asking. Uh, you know, they'll either give you something that you can help them with. And then you're like, absolutely. I know that person. I can connect you. Or, uh, you know, I can't think of anything right now, but thank you so much for asking. What can I do for you? They ask you how they can help you. What's a good referral look like for you? It gives you the opportunity to ask for that referral without asking for that referral. Um, I've had a number of people, especially lenders, um, that go, I can't believe a realtor just asked me how they can help me. Um, so that shows me there's not a lot of realtors out there asking how they can help. They're, they're more interested in how other people can help them. So if you're not that type of person that that's, that's, that's you and how you do business. Um, I come from a contribution and how I can help. And I've seen it pay back in dividends, um, and not have to be salesy about it. I don't like being salesy. I think somebody else mentioned that earlier too. Um, let's hear. We could do some role play if anybody wants. I can I can be the agent, and somebody wants to give me some because uh, I know one of the questions was objections. Um, although I don't know if she's still on here. It looks like she might have bolted, but uh, you know we can do some role modeling. I have no problem uh, doing some some scripting or whatever they call it these days. Um, if anybody wants to do that, if anybody has a specific scenario, I can try and fake my way through it and see if I sound all right. Um, anybody interested in doing that? I could be the client. Um, if Perfect. Want. Um, okay. Um, the only thing I can think of off the top of my head is that I think it was um, Amanda brought it up about the, the um, politics. Oh, after the election, 
You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because sure. that is something that my husband and I were discussing this past weekend because he specifically told me, oh, yeah, after the election, if so-and-so gets in, you know, interest rates and all this is going to drop. And I was trying to tell him, well, I'm not really sure that'll be re really the case. But sure. I, him, I can be all the political I want. But how would I approach that with, you know, someone that's not my husband? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, obviously you want to, just like in most other subjects, you, you do have to be sensitive because obviously it's a passionate subject for them, um, one way or the other, whatever way they believe. And so that's that's where you really have to be careful about not um, uh, really pushing your believe like your personal beliefs on them um and and agreeing with them in the sense of depending on what their objection is that yes um you know election years uh can make for a little bit more volatile of a of a real estate market and and really truly in, in almost every market it is a little bit more um volatile or, or ups and downs um you know volatile is a pretty harsh word um you know obviously over the last couple of years uh interest rates have gone up a little bit um you know the, it seems like every couple of weeks we're getting different stories from whether or not they're going to continue to raise interest rates or they're going to soften and lower over the course of this next year. Um, you know, obviously, uh, political uh, power uh, and, and whoever gets uh, into the presidency and whoever holds the uh, different uh, areas of the government uh, does have a little bit of an impact over that. Uh, however, it's not necessarily going to be immediate. Uh, and also, it really depends on your motivation. Um, are you really motivated to buy a house or to sell this right now and move on to the next chapter of your life? Uh, or, or do you want to? Are you not that motivated, and you do want to see how this plays out uh, with with a political campaign here in the next uh, year? Because we are looking about a year out before anything really happens, as far as uh, this directly impacting your purchase or your sale. So, what's your motivation? I can't argue with it. The best one would be I'm having another baby. Yeah. So, do you, is your house uh, too small? If, if that's is that my uh, correct assumption? If you're having another baby. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well then, uh, you know, do you want to wait for another year and hope that maybe in your, in your eyes that the, the right party gets elected and maybe interest rates go down? Uh, or would you like to get into a house and start building your equity now and maybe refinance uh, if the interest rates do go down in the next year or two? Well, you know, I don't know what um, the sex of the baby is, whether that my son and that baby could share a room, you know, and they're mm -hmm. going to be young. And so maybe that mm -hmm. would affect it. Like, you know, maybe a year is not that big of a problem, but I, I don't okay. know. Okay. When, when are, let, let me ask you this. Uh, are you, are you due within the next, uh, like before the end of the year or, or is it, is it closer towards the end of the year? Like, so you can wait that long and, and then find out the gender of the baby and, and be able to make that decision at that time. I'm due in six months. In six months. Okay. So that's going to be right in the, uh, the thick of things. We're not going to know hundred percent sure uh, who's, who's going to win this, but uh, the, the election and get elected. Uh, so it, it really comes down to your motivation. And if you feel like you would rather wait, um, I am seeing prices going up in, uh, in the area that you're looking. Um, so that will offset a little bit of, depending on what the interest rates do. Um, and there's also talk that it might go up a lot, um, which will impact your buying power a lot more than just the prices going up. Um, and like I said, you could always refinance down the road, uh, but once you lock in your rate, if your interest rates do go up, then you're automatically locked in that rate. So if they do go up substantially, let's say a half percent or more, uh, that's going to impact your buying power by probably twenty-five to fifty thousand um, dollars in the price range that you're looking for, uh, and that would impact uh, really uh, the size of the house you can get, which is, uh, is the most important. Do you agree? Yes. So, you know, do, or would you like to start uh, talking with a lender and get pre-approved to see what the interest rate might be and what we can lock you in uh, and what you could afford uh, now? And then we can move you in. So that way you're, uh, you have uh, four to six months to move in, get settled into the new house. So when the new baby comes, they can have their own room all set up and the nursery is all ready to go. And you don't have to try and do that as you're worrying about when the kid's going to come. Hmm, I guess that makes sense. I guess we can start the process. Fantastic. Yeah. And there's no commitment. Once you talk to a lender, um, they can work uh, through a pre-approval process and it's still not a commitment for you to go forward with it. If you decide after looking for uh, a, a little while that it's not the right time, you're not seeing anything in inventory, then we can absolutely put a pause on to uh, until next year or, or down the road. But let, let's take a look at it. It sounds like you're interested in doing that. So let's get you in front of a lender and connect with them. And then we can find a, a budget and, and start looking at houses for you. 
That's fantastic. I mean, I feel like that was not salesy, which is the exact opposite of what I want to be. You know, I want yeah. somebody to use me because I was an enjoyment to them, not forcing them into something. I feel like that is more of a long-term relationship anyway, anyways. And aren't we really in real estate trying to build long-term relationships? Absolutely. You're building the trust. You're, you're addressing their needs um, while, while, uh, still hearing their needs um, and not like telling them they're stupid because they think politics impacts the world. Right. I mean, I'm using that example. Obviously that's what we sometimes feel for pushing our opinion. I'm not calling people stupid because they, they believe politics are, are running the world, but um, you know, that's, that's what I think all of us are afraid of saying to people. Right. Uh, or right. that's kind of how they interpret things is like, they don't really appreciate my thought on this they think i'm dumb so I, why would i why would i want them to to work with me so you definitely have to avoid that for sure all right anything else you want to cover well, in, your, in your opinion is it good time for the seller is it good decision for the seller to wait after elections in in my opinion uh-huh um, I, I believe what I basically was saying uh, with, with Cassie is that if you if your life situation presents um, a need to move, then you have to be able to assess your own needs on whether or not the timeline works now or if it's down the road. If if Cassie were to say, no, I really want to wait and we're going to wait until after the the election, then that's their need. That's their motivation. If I start pressing back and telling them, no, you need to buy now because the, the you know the whatever party is going to be to be elected. Now I'm pressing my beliefs on them, and that's not how you. Um, that's not how I gain trust. Um, as far as a but personal, they, ask, they keep asking. Is it? Uh, I've been asked that. Is it a right time to sell now or waiting after the election? And I don't know the answer. Yeah, nobody does. And then, and then you can you can straight up tell them that. That's what I usually say is is I don't have a crystal ball, just like when interest rates started shooting through the roof. I don't know where the high the ceiling is. They could go up to 10. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you know, what I do know is what they are right now. I know the interest rates are, you know, within this range. This is what I know that we can get you pretty close to that, assuming you qualify for a mortgage. This is what I know now. And this is what I know we can lock you into. And this is the known, the facts that I can help you understand. And then you can determine whether or not that is the right amount or that right payment or the right time if, when we find the right house. If this is going to work with you and we can get the payment that you want, then it, it sounds like it's the right time for you to purchase. Do you agree? So could we add totally. to that? Do we add to that and say, well, whether it's the right time or not um, mm -hmm. is very personal. Yeah. Because I mean, the example that I've used with, you know, friends and family that I talk about all this with for real estate stuff, because that's pretty much all I do now, uh, you know, and I tell them, I, we sold our house in 2019 because the prices were so high, mm -hmm. knowing that when we bought our next house where we're at now, that we were going to buy at what we thought was the top of the market. Right. And then here we are all these years later, and <laughs> the prices of houses have skyrocketed even since then. I mean, between 19 and now. Yeah, I mean, nobody nobody saw what happened um, in mid to 2020 to to now. Uh, I mean, everything was pointing to the opposite, if anything. Um, so, I mean, you can use that as an example, and I I often do. Um, if they're worried about I'm going to buy at the top of the market and lose all my equity, um, I I point out that um, the the real estate market historically has proven that it's gone up over time. So. Is this house, are you planning on keeping this house for a uh, short term, meaning less than three to five years, or is this a long term uh, purchase for you? Are you planning on being this for five or more years and make them answer? If they say five or more, then you say historically, the market has has gone up uh, over a course of five to 10 years. Uh, and typically you at least match where you're, where you bought it at over the course of five to 10 years. So if you feel like you're going to hold on to it for at least that amount of time, historically, you're going to at least break even on your house. If you're going to hold it for the short term, 
that's a little bit more uh, you know, of a, of a risk of the potential that the market's going to go down. If you have to sell in three to five years, then that's going to be something that you definitely want to have a conversation a, a little bit more in depth about. But if it's a long-term investment, then historically, basically the market, the housing market does this, but there's times where it's this and there's times where it's this. So it just does this as it's slowly going up. So as long as you don't buy here and sell here, you hold on to it until it gets back to where it's above where you bought it at. So that's an example, like a physical example that I can do with my arm. I do that oftentimes, or you can draw it on a piece of paper, literally the, an upward arrow with the squiggly line over top of it and say, we're about right here right now. And it's going to potentially go down here in the next three to five years. But if you hold it long enough, it'll come back up and will gradually go up over time. So even at the low, it's going to be above where you bought it at. So that's well, a, that's a visual for people. I love that. So let me ask you this because I'm new to this. I've been doing it since the very end of September. Okay. Mm -hmm. So my question would to you would be, if you're doing that with your arm and it's going up and down and all of that. No, I love that. No, no, no. I, yeah. I talk with my hands. So that's perfect. So my thought on it is, you know, if you decide you're ready to buy when it's low, you're like, mm -hmm. you're ready to move because you had a kid, a drop off or wouldn't we bring in at that point, building wealth conversation? Yeah, I mean, if that's if that's their ultimate goal, um, I would I would lean hard on that. Um, I mean, if they're buying it for a building wealth asset, I, I would lean on that all the time, right? I mean, not too much, but I mean, you definitely want to continue to bring that back because if that's their motivation, you can you can continue to say buying a house is a wealth building purchase if you keep it long enough. Um, and that's honestly, uh, this is me personally talking. That's why I love what I do is because I help people buy an asset that will grow over time. So their net worth is bigger. Like at the end of the day, it's going to be up here as opposed to down here. Um, there's statistics that uh, non-homeowners or renters and, and don't own anything. Typically, the average net worth is around five to $15,000, their net worth, like total net worth. Um, homeowners are are in uh, usually uh, anywhere from a quarter million dollars plus. So $250,000 plus is their net worth. So for me, having that much more net worth, I'm helping somebody do that for themselves, whether they know it or not. So it's always there. It's just if that's their motivation, lean on that heavy. For sure. Uh, I think that answers your question, Cass. Yeah, my, my, my thought on it was you really need to move or desire to move. Um, you know, you could rent this, you know, rents have gone up in the three years that you've lived there. Maybe you can rent that buy your next house because it's the, the real estate markets, let's say low right now, mm -hmm. then in year, two years, whenever all that goes up, then you can sell it for the larger profit was kind of where I was going with that. And is that yeah. something that maybe I would send to talk to the lender they're wanting to work with, or I direct them to whatever, um, because I thought I'd heard somewhere, and maybe I need to direct us to a lender, but that you could do like a money out to help with the down on the next. Yeah, you you essentially get a, an equity loan uh, or a bridge loan in some cases, depending on if you're selling the, the first one or not. Um, but you can get a home equity loan, uh, either line of credit or term loan on your existing house to uh, to pay for the next one. Um, it, that's uh, absolutely. Or you put it down as collateral. Um, there's a variety of ways to do it. Um, yeah, you, I mean, if you're going to get specific on how they can do it, uh, you would want to connect them with a with a lender. But you can give those examples of, hey, if you have this one house and you want to invest in another one, either as an investment or a vacation house or whatever the case may be, um, you can absolutely use the the equity from your first house that you've built over the time you've owned it and apply it towards another one. So you don't have to save whatever $60,000 or whatever it is as a down payment for the new one. Beautiful. Thank you so much. So yeah, you can talk in a general sense like that. Um, uh, my wife and I have lending background. She was in mortgage lending for over 20 years and I was in commercial lending and and uh, I did home equity lines of credit, vehicle loans and that kind of stuff. So we know enough to, um, I jokingly say, know enough to be dangerous on the weekend and, and say those types of things to our clients with confidence and understand exactly how it's done um, because we've done it personally as well as professionally for so many years. Um, so familiarize yourself with the, the nuts and bolts and the generics um, be very careful about stepping over, you know, too far, right. Sure. And, and, and talking about things that you don't know really what you're talking about. 
Um, but you know, if you familiarize yourself enough with it, um, you can you can educate your client to help motivate them to what you know obviously is is will eventually be a good purchase for them if, if they make a good uh, decision on what they're purchasing and hold it for long enough. Um, so that's that's a motivator for some people. Uh, and there's a there's a great um, um, kind of outline and explanation on literally outlining here's how much net worth you grow as a renter and here's how much net worth you grow as a homeowner in your house specifically over the course of time um and it's a point in time really but it's if you have somebody on the fence on on whether or not it's a good investment or that type of thing um it's a great way to outline um visually again for your client i mean this works if you're just on the fly talking to somebody um but the the other thing i'm talking about um has like it's like an excel spreadsheet i guess you could say and literally says renters you have built no equity over the course of time you still build no equity you have this and the only thing you save is basically you don't have to do any maintenance on your house and then over here it's like yeah i've got like thirty thousand dollars of equity after one year and so it's a really powerful way of of outlining uh for uh, for clients. Beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah. So we're pretty much at, at time three o'clock. Uh, I think there might've been some other stuff, but I think we covered most of the stuff actually, um, in there other than just more role, role playing and that kind of stuff. Does anybody have any final questions or, or thoughts or, or anything? Okay. Well, uh, like I said, my contact information is in the um, uh, chat box. Feel free to reach out if you have any further questions uh, or or concerns or you want to. I'm, I'm happy to do script practicing um, at any point. Just give me a call uh, or shoot me a text. We can schedule something. Um, but thank you very much for participating today. I appreciate that. And hopefully you guys got something, uh, something out of it. And uh, have a good rest of your Monday. Bye, ladies.